In today's video, I'm going to be building a gaming PC only using parts from Amazon.com. All of these parts are brand new except for the GPU, which is in excellent condition. I gave myself a budget of $450 so that this is a PC that you guys can build too and not some $1,000 overpriced gaming PC. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So before we get started, I just want to mention that I'm going to be breaking up this video into three parts. Part one is each part and why I chose them. Part two is the build process and me building the PC. And part three is me putting this to the test and seeing how it performs. So for the motherboard, I chose the Asus B450M. This motherboard only costed me $70 and it is a micro ATX board. On the board, there is an AM4 chipset. It has four slots of DDR4 RAM and the M.2 SSD for right here and only one slot for the graphics card. There also is one extra slot just in case you wanted to add a capture card or a video card. In the motherboard box, it does come with your IO shield because the IO shield is not built in. It is separate. And now we can move on to the CPU. So for the CPU, we chose the AMD Ryzen 5 4500. This CPU only cost me $78 brand new which is why I chose this CPU. This is the CPU right here, the Ryzen 5 4500, and it also comes in with a, a stock cooler. And the stock cooler has pre-applied thermal base. So moving on to the RAM, I chose this eight, two by eight gigabytes of, of RAM. It runs at 3200 megahertz. I chose two eight gigabytes of 16 gigabytes of RAM so that it can run in dual channel. And I honestly don't know what brand this is, but I chose this RAM because it was one of the cheapest RAM sticks that I could find. This is what it looks like right here in black because I didn't really prioritize aesthetics because we're on a budget. So now we can move on. Now for the SSD, I chose a 512 gigabyte SSD from Team Group. I've actually never bought an SSD from there before because the last one I bought was from Crucial, but this one was the cheapest one I could find. So that's it for the SSD. Now for the power supply, this is the worst power supply. I know that and this is the cheapest power supply. So hopefully I'm not carrying a bomb right now but this is the cheapest power supply i could find 500 watts thermal take power supply it is 80 plus white which i actually like never heard of before but i'll be giving it a try today and now for everyone's favorite part the graphics card for the graphics card i chose the rx 580 which i got excellent condition off amazon for only 94 dollars which is pretty cheap because the original price is $140. So as you can see, it's wrapped very well with a bunch of bubble wrap. And now for the actual graphics card. Here you go. So honestly, I was expecting it to look a little bit better because as you can see, it does have a lot of dust on it, but it's the performance that matters. So hopefully it'll perform for us just as well. So now for the case, we have right here, the Antec NX200M Micro ATX case. I got this in a black colorway because last build, I chose a white one. So I wanted to try something different this time. And I also chose Micro ATX because it just i prefer smaller cases than when they're too big now it's just unbox it and there we have it the case so the case actually only comes with one pre-installed fan which is in the rear so there is no fans in the front 
So there you go. Here's the micro ATX case. It is actually pretty small. I did not expect them to be this small, but I mean, it still looks like a very nice case. So as you can see, the fans back here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but that's it for the case. And the last item that we have right here is the fans. I chose to get more fans because one fan was really like, I just did not know it was gonna be that little. So I chose to get these three thermal right fans. It is 120 millimeters and I actually only got these for $12. So I'm gonna see how they perform. So this only costed $12. So we're still in a pretty good budget right now. And here's what the fans look like. I got them in black so that they would match the build. And that's it. So now we can get the building. So the very first thing that I always start with when building a PC is the CPU. So to put the CPU, you want to grab this lever right here, lift it up, then you take your CPU, and as you can see, there's a little golden arrow on the CPU, and you want to line it up with the other little arrow that's there, and make sure that you do not bend any pins when putting it. So when you drop it, you just want to drop it straight down, just like that. And there, you can see that everything is straight, so you just... Push the lever back, and there we go. We have the CPU installed. Now we can move on to the stock cooler. So I already mentioned that it has pre-applied thermal paste, so that's nothing to worry about. So to install the stock cooler, you're gonna see that there is these four, these four screws and these two black plastic pieces. You're gonna have to unscrew both of these. And you just put it to the side and do the same thing with the one on the top. There we go. Now that we're done, you can install a stock cooler. There's these little four circles right here. And that's where you want the screws, these ends to go in. So I'm going to put the AMD sign facing away from the ram because i don't want it to be blocking it so now it's lined up you want to screw one at a time but don't screw it all the way because if you put too much like if you screw it too much on one side you won't be able to screw the other side once that's done you don't have to worry about screwing it too much because it's just going to stop on its own Okay, now that we have the stock cooler installed, you gotta plug in this wire right here. So at the top, you could see there is a part that says CPU fan. You wanna plug it in right there. There we go. Now, now that we have the CPU done, we can move on to the RAM. So, since I want my RAM to run dual channel, you want to open slots 2 and 4. So, these two. And as you can see, there is a little thing right there that's stopping the RAM. So, you can only put in the RAM one way. So, you want to line it up with this little hole right here. So I heard the click. That's how I know that the RAM is properly installed. So you're going to do the same thing with your second sticker RAM. There we go. Now we have both of our sticks of RAM installed. Now time for the SSD. So your SSD slot is right here. As you can see, there's one, two, three and the fourth screw right here because there is different lengths of um ssds i have my ssd right here so you just want to line it up right over here and you just push it down 
So before installing your motherboard, there is a back panel. And in the back panel, there is these two screws, so just remove them. And in the back, there is these screws, and you're gonna need these screws for your motherboard. And make sure to remove all the metal, metal ties that you see on the back of the case, because you don't want these touching your motherboard and messing your motherboard up. So now we could put the motherboard inside the case. So as you can see, the motherboard has all the standoffs for micro ATX. So now all we gotta do is line it up and screw them in. So everything is lined up, we can start screwing it in. As I mentioned earlier, you are gonna need these screws to screw in your motherboard. And the screws needed are the small ones. So there's these screws right here, which is for the power supply. And these screws right here that are for the motherboard. As you can see, there is a pretty big size difference. So now we can just start screwing in the motherboard. So now we have everything screwed in and here's what it looks like. So now we can move on to the power supply. So actually before mounting the power supply, I would recommend that you remove the hard drive cage because it does take up useless storage because I'm not going to be using it. So you just got to unscrew these two screws. And there we go we have it removed so to install your power supply you want to make sure that the fan is facing downwards and the cables are gonna be going this way so you just gotta put it this way and make sure to remove the knot there we go and now to screw it in you're just going to want to line it up and take these big screws that I was talking about earlier. And now you just screw in these four points. There we go, we have the power supply installed. Okay, so to install our Thermorite fans, I'm gonna want to put one in the rear and two up front. And with this one, I'm gonna be putting it up here just because why not? So to take off the front, you have to just pull it off. You're gonna need to put a lot of force on it. There we go. It's not broken, so don't be scared. All right, so to install it, you're going to want to put it through here. So here's what it looks like with all the fans installed. So now that everything is installed, it's time to install the graphics card. So to do that, you're gonna wanna put it in right here. So, and as you can see right here, there is the, the slots that the graphics card is gonna use. And this one is only gonna use two slots. So I'm gonna unscrew this and I'll take this off.
Okay, so I just realized that this is going to be a super tight fit for this graphics card. So... Okay, so the graphics card is going to be a super tight fit, so... There we go, graphics card is installed. So now, we could just close the bracket back. There we go, graphics card installed, so now we can get to the cables. So the first cable I'm going with is the 24 pin. So I'm just gonna fit it through here. This is what it looks like, it, it actually has 24. And I'm gonna put this part facing the bottom. And there we go. Just tuck this in. Next, we'll go with the CPU cable. So the CPU cable is gonna go right up here. There we go. Next, for the USB cable, I'll tuck it in through the bottom. It's pretty hard to see. So, right here. And it's all the way under the graphics card, so... Okay, so graphics card is removed, so... I'll do all the cables that are down here at the same time. So the very first cable is this blue USB cable. You're gonna wanna plug it in into this one right here. And you can see there's a little hump. You're gonna wanna put it pointing downwards. There we go, that's installed. Next, I'll go with the HD audio. Okay, so we have it right here. So we have it right here. You're gonna wanna put the HD audio all the way over here. And the with the text facing up. I'll just separate this first. So now that the PC build is finished for the very first boot, and there we go, the PC is on. And the only reason why the fans are not on or the LEDs is because I got the wrong fans. So this motherboard is a four pin RGB fan header and these fans have a three pin so it just doesn't fit. But I mean overall for $430 this is still a very nice all black gaming PC. So now we're just gonna have to go see how it performs. So here's a little montage for you guys. Now all we have to do is go install Windows, go install the drivers, and we'll get to gaming.